chapter 10, module 1. Mayer Vietari's theorem provides a very important tool for computing singular homology groups. In this module, we shall establish Mayer Vietari's theorem. For proving Mayer Vietari's theorem, we have to establish three exact sequences and we shall show how we can join them to get a long exact sequence called Mayer Vietari's sequence. Let us recapitulate a few facts. Suppose x is a topological space. If C n x is the free abelian group generated by the collection of all singular n simplexes S n x for each dimension n greater than or equal to 0, then we define a map delta n from C n x to C n minus 1 x given by delta n f equal to summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 to the power of i f compose d i. These functions delta n are called boundary homomorphisms. Here d i is a map which inserts 0 after the ith coordinate of any n minus 1 tuple. For each n greater than or equal to 1, z n x stands for the kernel of delta n for each n greater than or equal to 0 and b n x stands for the image of delta n plus 1 and we know that these two are subgroups of c n x. We take z 0 x as c 0 x and it can be observed that b n x is a subset of z n x for all n greater than or equal to 0. We also define something called the homology group h n x as the quotient group z n x by b n x for every n greater than or equal to 0. Suppose x and y are two topological spaces and f is a continuous function from x to y. If s n x and s n y denote the collection of all singular n simplexes of x and y, then c n x and c n y are the corresponding free abelian groups generated by S n x and S n y respectively. For every S belonging to S n x, there exists F composed S in S n y and we get a map from S n x to S n y by sending the element S to the element f composed s. Extending it by linearity, a homomorphism C n f from C n x to C n y is obtained. It can also be seen that the diagram shown here is commutative. That means, C n minus 1 f composed delta n is equal to del n composed C n f. We have also seen earlier that C n f takes all the n cycles of x to the n cycles of y and C n f sends the n boundaries of x to the n boundaries of y. So, for each n greater than or equal to 0, the continuous function f from x to y induces a homomorphism h n f from h n x to h n y which is given by the formula that h n f evaluating at z plus b n x gives the element c n f z plus b n y. Now, we shall use all these notations 
that whenever we say capital X, we always mean that it is a topological space. If u and v are taken, then they always mean open subsets of X with X equal to u union v unless we state otherwise. The maps i, j, k and l are respectively the inclusion maps from u to x, v to x, u intersection v to u, u intersection v to v. From these inclusion maps, we get the induced homomorphisms H and I, H and J, H and K and H and L for every n greater than equal to 0. Now, we define two functions. One is F n from the direct sum H n u and H n v to the homology group H n x, which we define by F n evaluated at a point x y is equal to H n i x minus H n j y. And another map G n from H n u intersection v to H n u direct sum H n v and it is defined by g n x is equal to h n k of x comma h n l of x. In what follows for ease of notation, we shall denote these maps by f and g instead of f n and g n and understand the domain from the context. Let us state a result that is known as chain splitting without proof. We shall use this result frequently in this module. If S is a member of C n x and capital X is u union v, where u and v are open sets in x, then there are S u and S v respectively in C n u and C n v such that S is homologous to S u plus S v. That means, there is some chain T in C n plus 1 x such that S minus S u minus S v is equal to delta n plus 1 of T. It is easy to observe that the composite H n i composed H n k is equal to H n j composed H n l. That means, the following diagram commutes. Since the diagram commutes, if we take f of g x for any x from the domain of g, then that is equal to f of h n k x comma h n l x and that is equal to h n i of h n k x minus h n j of h n l x. But since the diagram commutes, we have that this difference is equal to 0. That means, f compose g of any x is equal to 0, so that image of g is contained in kernel of f. Now, with this observation, we establish our first exact sequence that for each n greater than equal to 0, h n u intersection v 
to h n u direct sum h n v to h n x. If we take this sequence, then we already have defined the maps g and f between these two groups h n u intersection v and h n u direct sum h n v and h n u direct sum h n v and h n x. We have to show that this sequence is exact. For this to be exact, we need to show that kernel of f is equal to image of g. In the observation, we have already seen that image of g is contained in kernel of f. So, we want to show the reverse inclusion. That means, we take a point C d from kernel of f and wish to show that it is a member of image of g. Since C d is in kernel of f, C is in h and u and d is in h and v such that f of C d is equal to 0. Now, suppose alpha and beta are cycles that represent C and D respectively. Now, f of C D is equal to 0 implies H n i C minus H n j D is the null element of H n x. So, that there exists some T in C n plus 1 x with C n i alpha minus C n j beta is equal to delta n plus 1 of t. By chain splitting, there are chains T u in C n plus 1 u and T v in C n plus 1 v such that T is homologous to T u plus T v. So, T minus T u minus T v is equal to delta n plus 2 of a for some a belonging to C n plus 2 of x. That is delta n plus 1 T minus T u plus T v is equal to delta n plus 1 of delta n plus 2 of a and that is equal to 0 because deltas are all boundary homomorphisms. Therefore, we get that delta n plus 1 of t is equal to delta n plus 1 of t u plus delta n plus 1 of t v. Hence, delta n plus 1 of t u plus delta n plus 1 of t v is equal to C n i of alpha minus C n j of beta and that is equal to alpha minus beta. From this we get alpha minus d n plus 1 t u is equal to beta plus d n plus 1 t v. Now, the n chain on the left of the expression is a chain on u and the n chain on the right of the expression is a chain on v. So, this last equation suggests that alpha minus delta n plus 1 of T u and beta plus delta n plus 1 of T v are chains of u intersection v. So, let us write it as some element x that means alpha minus delta n plus 1 T u which is equal to beta plus delta n plus 1 of T v is equal to some x, where x is a chain in u intersection v. Consequently, c can be written as alpha plus b n u, which is alpha minus delta n plus 1 of t u plus b n u and that is equal to x plus b n u, which is h n k of x plus b n u intersection v. Similarly, 
the element d is of the form h n l of x plus b n u intersection v. Hence, the pair C d is equal to g of x plus b n u intersection v that is the pair C d is in image of g. Therefore, as we claimed earlier kernel of f is a subset of image of g proving the sequence as an exact sequence. So far we have defined maps between the homology groups of the direct sum of h n u h n v and uh, h n u intersection v and uh, also connecting h n u intersection v with h n x. Now we shall see how we can define a map that connects homology groups of different dimensions. So, we start with defining a map which takes the elements of h n x to the homology group h n minus 1 of u intersection v. We define a map from h n x to h n minus 1 of u intersection v. So, let us take an element c from c n x such that c plus b n x is an element of h n x that means c is a cycle and therefore delta n of c is equal to 0. By chain splitting there exists c u in c n u and c v in c n v such that c minus c u minus c v is equal to delta n plus 1 of t for some t belonging to c n plus 1 of x. So, delta n of c minus c u minus c v is equal to delta n of delta n plus 1 of t and that is equal to 0. So, that is delta n of c which is equal to 0 is equal to delta n of c u minus c v which gives delta n of c u is equal to minus delta n of c v. The left side of this expression shows that it is a chain in u and the right side of the expression shows that it is a chain in v. Hence, both are chains in u intersection v. Also, delta n of c u is a member of c n minus 1 of u intersection v with delta n minus 1 of delta n c u is equal to 0, which implies that delta n c u is a member of z n minus 1 u intersection v. Hence, for each c plus b n x belonging to h n x, we find an element delta n c u plus b n minus 1 of u intersection v inside h n minus 1 of u intersection v. It is not hard to show that such an element depends on c only and not on any choice of the element c u. We state it as a lemma. It can be seen very easily that if c is homologous to c u plus c v and also to b u plus b v where c u and b u are in c n u and c v and b v are in c n v then delta n of c u plus b n minus 1 of u intersection v is equal to delta n of b u plus b n minus 1 of u intersection v. With the help of that lemma, we get a map that between h n x 
and h n minus 1 u intersection v for every n greater than equal to 1, which is described by the element c plus b n x is sent to the element delta n of c u plus b n minus 1 of u intersection v, where c u is an element of c n u as discussed before. Now, before establishing our next exact sequence, we observe a very important fact that if C plus B n x is an element of H n x, then delta n C is equal to 0 and applying the chain splitting on the element C, there exists C u and C v such that C minus C u minus C v is in is of the form delta n plus 1 of t, where t is in C n plus 1 of x. So, delta n evaluated at the point C minus C u minus C v is equal to delta n on delta n plus 1 of t, which in turn gives that delta n c minus delta n c u minus delta n c v is equal to 0. Hence, delta n c u is equal to minus delta n c v. The left side expression is a chain on u and the right side expression is a chain on v. Therefore, both are members of p n minus 1 u intersection v. This piece of argument is utilized very frequently in what follows next. We want to establish that the sequence of groups and homomorphisms as written here that is h n u direct sum h n v to h n x is a map f and h n x to h n minus 1 of u intersection v is a map eta. This particular sequence is exact. Let us choose any point x from image of f we wish to show that it is in the kernel of eta. Since x is in image of f, there exists c bar and d bar in h n u direct sum h n v such that f of c bar d bar is equal to x. Now, eta x is equal to eta of f of c bar d bar and that is equal to eta of h n i c bar minus h n j d bar. And h n i c bar is a member of h n x implies that it is of the form alpha plus b n x, where alpha is an n cycle. Using chain splitting on alpha, we get alpha u and alpha v such that alpha u plus alpha v is homologous to alpha. As observed earlier, delta n alpha u is an element of b n minus 1 u intersection v. Similarly, delta n beta u is an element of b n minus 1 u intersection v, where h n j d bar is of the form beta plus b n x and beta is homologous to beta u plus beta v. Then eta x is of the form delta n alpha u minus beta u plus b n minus 1 u intersection v 
and that is equal to b n minus 1 u intersection v proving that x belongs to kernel of eta that is image of f is contained in kernel of eta. For the reverse inclusion, we start with c plus b n x from kernel of eta. Using chain splitting on c, we have c u plus c v homologous to c, then delta n of c u is in b n minus 1 u intersection v and proceeding exactly as the previous observation delta n c u is equal to delta n d for some d belonging to c n u intersection v and that is equal to minus delta n c v and hence c u minus d is in kernel of delta n and c v plus d is in the kernel of delta n. So, c u minus d belongs to c n u and c v plus d belongs to c n v with their sum equal to c u minus d plus c v plus d implies that c is homologous to c u minus d plus c v plus d. Hence, if operated on this element c u minus d plus b n u comma minus c v plus d plus b n v becomes c plus b n x that is c plus b n x is an element of image f. Finally, we establish the last exact sequence that maps h n x to h n minus 1 u intersection v via eta and maps h n minus 1 u intersection v to the direct sum h n minus 1 u with h n minus 1 v via the map g and we shall show that this is an exact sequence. So, take any point from h n x, let us call that point x plus b n x, then g composed eta evaluated at x plus b n x is equal to g of delta n e x u plus b n minus 1 u intersection v, where x u is the thing that we have mentioned earlier that is the component of x within c n u which is added with another component x v of c n v gives an element homologous to x. And simply by applying the functions, we ultimately get that g composed eta on x plus b n x is equal to the 0 element. That is image of eta is contained in kernel of g. Now, if we start with an element from kernel of g, then g of that element is equal to the 0 element of the domain of g that means, b n minus 1 u comma b n minus 1 v. And so, applying the definition of the function g on x bar, we get that x plus b n minus 1 u is equal to b n minus 1 u and x plus b n minus 1 v is equal to b n minus 1 v. So, that x is an element of the intersection b n minus 1 u with b n minus 1 v. So, there are elements b u and b v respectively from c n u and c n v such that x is del n b u plus del n b v. Then of course, del n b u minus b v is equal to 0 
and so B u minus B v belongs to Z n x that is eta operated on B u minus B v plus B n x is equal to x plus B n minus 1 of u intersection v. Therefore, the element x plus B n minus 1 u intersection v which we had started with is an element of image of eta proving that kernel of G is contained in image of eta. With all these exact sequences, if we join suitably, we get a long exact sequence called mayer vietori's sequence as shown here. That if x is a topological space, u v are open subsets of x with x equal to u union v, then we get a long exact sequence h n u intersection v to the direct sum h n u direct sum h n v to h n x etcetera up to the 0 level h 0 u intersection v to h u direct sum h v to h 0 x to 0. This is a very important sequence known as mayer vietori's sequence. In the next module, we shall see how we shall use this mayer vietori's sequence to compute singular homology groups. With this, we end chapter 10, module 1.